She's anything but irrelevant. They dare to call me irrelevant. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Moira Rose quotes on Schitt's Creek. For this list, we're specifically looking at quotes rather than Moira's iconic moments, such as the pep talk she gives Stevie during Cabaret. What the hell is your secret, Stevie? You just stand your solid ground, refusing to be anything but you. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. My life's been trouble. Number 10. Selfish, duplicitous whore. When we first meet the Roses, they're not the most sympathetic characters, and rarely have a nice word to say about one another. The world is falling apart around us, Tron, and I'm dying inside. This is never more clear than when Alexis reveals that her boyfriend will be flying in to pick her up. Well, that is not happening, and I am appalled that my baby girl has turned into a selfish, duplicitous whore. Oh, hello. Moira's response is classic, made even funnier by the fact that this is the first thing Twyla ever hears her, or any of the Roses for that matter, say. Though this may not be the best way to convince her daughter that abandoning them is a bad idea, it shows that even from the beginning, Moira didn't want the family to split up. Wonderful anecdote. Could you give us a moment, please? Whenever you're ready. I'm just right over here. I forbid you to abandon our family. I am a grown woman, mother. This is the act of a spoiled child. Number nine, every time she says baby. Oh, it was the baby. I'm so relieved. One of the most entertaining parts of the whole show is Moira's bizarre vocal inflections. And it's always a treat to see precisely how Catherine O'Hara is going to deliver her lines. One common pronunciation we love to hear again and again is the word baby, or bebe, as Moira would say. Where is bebe's chamber? Oh, there she is now. She's either up or taking a leak. Either way, great progress for Bebe. The word is almost unrecognizable and only gets funnier the more you hear it. My Bebe girl leaving me so soon. Luckily for the audience, season four gave us a pregnancy plot line and later episodes have Johnny and Moira babysitting Roland Jr. Oh, she has no idea of the toll a Bebe can take on its mother or its mother's mother. Moira, I'm the one who's pregnant. If only. But Bebe was still invoked sparingly enough to keep it hilarious each time it popped up. You do realize that Bebe is crying? I do, yes. Isn't it scheduled to be dormant by now? Number eight, meetings. Tragedy strikes at the motel when an elderly guest is found dead in his room. Has someone been killed? No. No. No, John, no. No, I have endured a cornucopia of trauma the last few years. I draw the line at living in a crime scene. While David's trying to work out where he stands with Patrick and whether he can stay over to avoid the corpse, Moira arrives at Rose Apothecary to discuss the incident. Only this happens after Moira talks her way out of helping Johnny deal with the fallout because her schedule is apparently too full. Unfortunately, my previous engagements preclude me from offering my beneficence around the motel today. John, I hate to leave you like yeah, that. I know, Moira, you know, busy, busy. It's clear from the way she can't actually tell David what her meetings are that there most likely aren't any meetings at all. But you can't blame her for wanting to get out of there. I am booked up, David. You should see my schedule. I'm positively bedeviled with meetings, etc. Number seven, fruit wine. Moira is hired to be the spokesperson for a local brand of fruit wine, which she initially assumes should be a breeze. However, nerves get the better of her. Action. Hello, I'm Moina Rose. And if you okay, let- Back to one, still rolling. Why, why? You said Moina. Sure did. Are you sure? And to try to combat the fact that she believes she can't act anymore, she starts sampling a little too much of the product. But while she can't stop drinking it, she makes no secret of the fact that it's disgusting. This wine is awful. Give me another glass. As if that isn't enough, the commercial she finally ends up filming, while drunk, is one of the show's best moments. In the lee of a picturesque ridge lies a small, unpretentious winery, one that pampers its fruit like its own babies. The fruit wine episode is so iconic that Annie Murphy was even roped in to do her best Moira impression and recreate the scene. Who brings the musk melon goodness to his oak chardonnay? and the dazzling peach crab apple to his Riesling Rioja. Number six, petty fogging. In an effort to prove she can do things on her own, 
and win the Schitt's Creek Arts and Culture Grant, Alexis suggests a small singles night at the cafe. Moira is dismissive, but ends up bringing Alexis's idea to council herself. After a glut of Unasinus ideas put forth today, the room is suddenly bombolating with anticipation. Can we feel that? It's almost as though we're building towards some sort of inevitable climax. Only it's now been upgraded to an entire singles week. Alexis is understandably annoyed that Moira basically stole her idea, and Moira condemns her for petty fogging. So you stole my idea? took it to council, and claimed it as your own. Alexis, now is not the time for petty fogging. <sighs> the word is straight out of the 18th century and means focusing on petty or trivial details. But if Moira had been paying more attention to those petty details, she probably wouldn't have accidentally pitched a singles week instead of a one-off event. Well, then I took your little germ of an idea and I fertilized it to fruition. Number five, she hath risen. It isn't the first time a celebrity has been falsely identified as being dead, but Moira's preemptive demise becomes the talk of the town. What is the source of this falsehood? And what photo are they using? The motel is besieged by sympathy cards and bouquets of flowers, including, much to Moira's ire, a bunch of pink carnations. Who sends pink carnations? Despite social media saying otherwise, the Roses quickly learn that Moira is, in fact, still alive. But this is still Moira, and she can't let the news of her resurrection fly under the radar. You know, it says here that Moira was projected to be nominated for 10 Daytime People's Choice Awards. 12. Oh, oh my god. Oh. The most projected nominee to have never actually been nominated. So she loudly proclaims that she's returned from beyond the grave while the Jazzagals grieve. Fear not. She hath risen. Oh. <laughs> And then she tries to get them to eulogize her. Or, uh, <laughs> heaven just got its newest leading lady. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, I think we should get to rehearsal, okay? We can revisit this later. Number four, the devil's telephone. Time and time again, we've seen that Moira isn't the best at keeping secrets, which is what makes this line so hilariously hypocritical. I, I did call that other woman charming, didn't I? Striking, I believe was the word you used to describe Ted's new girlfriend, who isn't Alexis. While trying to get to the bottom of Alexis's love life, when she discovers Alexis is still pining for Ted, Moira presses Twyla for information. Always the closed book, our Alexis, bless her soul. I've always found her to be pretty open about things. A closed book that falls open the second you take it off the shelf. When it becomes clear that Twyla knows more about Alexis than Moira, Moira tries to take the moral high ground and says she's not happy gossiping about her daughter behind her back. It's hard to believe that Moira has ever hung up on gossip in her life. I, I wasn't gossiping. It was just that you brought mm. it up. So I just wanted to clarify that it was... Gossip is the devil's telephone. Best to just hang up. Number three, it was also wrong. I was worried sick, dear. Where's David? Or his bags? Throughout the season two premiere, it's not clear whether Moira actually cares about finding her missing son or whether she's more interested in finding a family heirloom, a bag he's taken with him. It's an heirloom. My great grandmother took it from her husband when she left him, and it has been passed down through all the women in my family as emergency currency in case we need to leave our husbands in the middle of the night. Oh, well, that's reassuring. She certainly calms down when she gets the bag back, however, and seems to forget that she ought to be disciplining David for running off with Roland's truck. When she finally gets her chance to tell him what she thinks, our expectations continue to be subverted. She makes it clear that she approves of his impulsive melodrama. Well, he's definitely his mother's son, that's for sure. You can't just leave with other people's trucks, David. What were you thinking? What you did was impulsive, capricious, and melodramatic. But it was also wrong. Number two, comatose. In an effort to regain some of their lost wealth, Johnny spends most of season one trying to sell the town again. $975,000, wow, that's a heck of a lot of cheddar. Don't you think so, sweet cheeks? Sweet cheeks, aren't you the old fashioned charmer? When he and Moira are just about to make a million dollar deal with a potential buyer, Andy suddenly has a medical emergency at the dinner table and slips into a coma. We okay, had the pen him. in his hand. Oh. Sign, he was going to sign. It's later on when Johnny and Moira are taking stock of the fact that they're not leaving Schitt's Creek anytime soon, that Moira laments the fact that she wasn't the one to end the evening comatose. People do come out of comas. Oh, I'd kill for a good coma right now. It's this kind of dramatic, if morbid, reaction that makes Moira so beloved. 
I'm genuinely sorry that my impression of Moira isn't better. Like, I really want it to be, but Catherine O'Hara is just beyond. Also, this was an impossible list to choose entries for because everything that comes out of her mouth is iconic. So I know you're gonna say that we left something out because we did, and I agree, they're all great. But there's only room for 10, so now we're gonna look through some honorable mentions before we get to our personal favorite Moira Rose quote. When Moira says she's used to handling people with fragile egos. If there's anyone at this fabulous little confab who knows how to work a room of fragile egos, it's me. I once hosted the non-televised portion of the People's Choice Awards. When David and Alexis won't stop bickering. Children, mindless bickering is a luxury we may no longer afford. You are blind to reality, and for that, I am most proud. But our world's evil twin... Okay, I'm has, taking my journal to the bathroom. ...has reared her or ugly... I will be shutting the door. David, you might actually want to hear this. When Alexis wants to know why they never came to rescue her. Do I have to remind you of the time that I was taken hostage on David Geffen's yacht by Somali pirates for a week and nobody answered my texts? I had just had my eyelashes dyed. Everything was cloudy. Okay, can we all focus here? When Moira lands her old role on the Sunrise Bay reboot. Please tell me this is not some Barbara Jape. Yes. Yes. My answer is a yes. A clangorous, vociferous yes. When Moira can't find her old tasteful nudes online. Why aren't they coming up? What, do you have some kind of childproof lock on this internet? Mm, nope. That would make my job very boring. Oh, keep scrolling, please. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, disgruntled Pelican. One of the problems with occupying connected motel rooms with his entire family is that David struggles to maintain his privacy. David, you were dressed like a harlequin and you were glowing shiny jewels. Perhaps that was just a night terror. Um, oh God. This is never more clear than when Jake drops by for some afternoon delight and introduces himself to Moira after emerging from the shower. Moira offers David some typically weird advice when he gets embarrassed by her presence. Nobody was supposed to be home. Nobody was supposed to be home. So you were supposed to be at lunch. Why, why, are you, why were you not at lunch? David, stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. Though she never makes it clear what a disgruntled pelican actually is. Do pelicans frequently get disgruntled in the wild? Regardless of what it means, however, it's become one of the show's most enduring phrases. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.